God bless you. God bless you on this sanctified Saturday. I just want to start off by praying for those that are really struggling in this time of uh, trial and tremendous um, worldly um, chaos. Um, we want to pray for those that are most vulnerable, those that are more most susceptible to this uh, attack of the enemy. Father, we ask you to touch those and protect those that are most vulnerable right now, Lord, that you would not let one hair of their head be harmed. God, that you would uh, give those that are in leadership, in executive, and in um, legislative um, levels, uh, give them peace, give them wisdom, God. Give them insight and knowledge to how to best uh, thwart the plan of the enemy, uh, the best ways to address these issues, God, and give the families in the communities and in every neighborhood wisdom, Lord, not to panic and not to be selfish and not to create more problems by their fear than uh than uh, sticking with you and, 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 and embracing you and their faith, Lord. We ask you to, that, that you would seed this world with your face and that you would give us peace that surpasses all understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, I was uh, thinking yesterday um, about, I think I have like a, a thousand associates that are on my media outlet and I cannot think of one of them that actually have the virus or know anybody that has it but yet the enemy has caused such a global panic that it has trickled down to your house and mine so um, I want to give you some words that has established this time since the beginning of the age and give you some words from God and the prophets that would build your faith and uh, break down the fear that is a spirit of fear that's trying to take over this world. It can be found in the second chapter of, of Corinthians, um, starting uh, the second, I'm sorry, the second book, fourth chapter of Corinthians. And it talks about all these uh, trials and tribulations and ultimately how the Lord is over all and we can take comfort in him. We can take safety in him. We can find refuge, wisdom, everything we need in him. Amen. The Bible says, uh, uh, I'm just going to read the whole chapter. It says, therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's honest and not deceitful. See, the uh, spirit of fear is deceitful. And because we received mercy, we faint not. Amen. Everything that could have killed us, would have killed us, didn't kill us. And because we've, we, we, we know that it's because of God's mercy that has it happened, we faint not. Amen. Let me continue and just read the Bible. Uh, verse, second verse, it says, But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in, in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's con conscience in the sight of God. Uh, verse 3, But if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those that are lost. Come on, somebody. We're not going to react to things based on what the world is reacting to them, although I'm not saying that we don't need to be prepared. I'm saying that we're not going to allow that fear to get inside of our heart to make us panic and to make us lose faith. Amen. I'm not saying to not to prepare. Amen. The Bible says in the fourth verse of the fourth chapter of the second book of Corinthians, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Amen. Of course, the world's going to panic because they have no faith. Amen. At least the, they said if they did have faith, excuse me, it says that if they did have faith, 
the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, would shine in them. And if it shined in him, uh, they would see that this is a temporary trial, amen, and that no weapon formed against them would prosper, but they don't see it that way. But that doesn't stop us because we preach not to ourselves or not of ourselves, but we preach Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves the servants of Jesus Christ for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. All those things that were hidden in darkness have been shown forth and has been manifest in the coming and birth, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's, uh, chapter seven, I mean, uh, verse number seven in the fourth book or the first, the fourth uh, uh, chapter of the second book of Corinthians says in verse seven, but we have this treasure that's hidden in earth investments that the excellently, excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of us. It comes from the inside from God. The reason why we're not fainting and, and, and that the people that hold faith in God is not going to be shooken and broken and, 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 and torn all the way down and destroyed was from the seed of God that we hold on to that is inside of Christ Jesus, amen, that is from Christ Jesus. Our foundation is not of ourselves. Our foundation is of Christ Jesus. Because of that, we're not going to allow this worldly panic, amen, to take our hearts and to make us uh, sick of panic because of panic and because of fear and because of selfishness of others that are taking everything for themselves and not even thinking about the widows and the orphans and the sick and the elderly and the real young and infants, because that's where the attack is. The attack is on the youth and on the elderly, amen, on the infants and on the elderly, amen. Do you know anybody that's been, that has the virus? If so, comment below. We are praying for those people. But uh, like I say, I have over a thousand friends and associates and not one of them are sick and neither are Neither are their friends or their family members. Praise God. <clears throat> um, verse number eight, it says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We are cast down, but we're not destroyed. We're always bearing about in this body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. No matter how bad it gets when we're with Jesus, amen, we will, will not be destroyed, amen. The life of Christ is eternal and you shall not die, amen. You shall not die. It says, uh, uh, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, so then death work is in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Amen. We're not speaking panic. We're speaking faith. Amen. Now check this out. Now this I'm winding down. This is the 15th verse of the fourth chapter of the second book of Corinthians. It says, for all things are for our sakes that the abundant grace uh, might through the thanksgiving may, hold on, let me start all over. Verse 15 says, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. For this light affliction is just for a moment, and it's working in us a far more greater ex external 
uh -huh, an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are perishing. They're temporary, subject to change at any moment. But the things we cannot see are eternal. Amen. So let's understand that nothing by any means shall hurt us. Amen. God has given us power to tread on scorpions and snakes and over all power of the enemy. The spirit of fear is not going to reside here. That's our that's our focal point for this year. Fear will not reside here. It's not going to take president. We're not going to make decisions based on fear. We're not going to make uh, uh, emotional uh, 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 thoughts. We're not going to continually have e uh, emotional thoughts on fear. Amen. That we know that God, through his, his son, Jesus Christ, has put in us the spirit to overcome and faith and faith will destroy fear every time. Amen. So we're just going to believe God. Amen. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned and that we are walking under the shadow of the almighty and that we look at not the things that we are seeing but the things that we cannot see for the things that we see are temporary and the things that we cannot see are eternal through our lord christ jesus who's lord over all and he says that he would have no man perish, but all would come to Jesus, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we bless you in Jesus name. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will see the glory of God out of the darkness that is all over this world, that as God brought light out of darkness, he will bring you out of that dark panic, that dark despair, that dark sickness, that dark Paraliz that, that paralyzing emotional torment that you're going through, that God would snatch you out of darkness and bring you to his marvelous light. And you will be a sign to this world that just like God raised Jesus from the dead and the damnation that he has raised you up, cleaned you up, turned you around and made you a voice of faith right in the face of fear. Amen. This too shall pass and you will see the glory of the God. You will see the glory of God in the land of the living. In Jesus name, Pastor Keith, peace, not panic. In Jesus name.